So the pathway in our view has been set and we see a significant increase in the demand for gas going forward, but we do need the infrastructure. So, so that is, that is the, uh, the caveat to, to, uh, to achieving these goals. Current piped gas supply to South Africa will start declining in the next 36 months. Joining me to unpack this dire situation is Yaku Himan, the Executive Director of the Industrial Gas Users Association of Southern Africa. Yaku, thanks very much for being with us uh, for today. Could you tell us a bit about how we're currently in the situation and, and what are the factors contributing to why we arrived where we currently are? Thank you, Chris, for the introduction. Correct. So um, the, the, the gas landscape um, looks bleak at this particular point in time, purely from a gas availability perspective. So as a, as a, a industry body or industry association, um, gas availability is one of the elements we focus on together with price and policy. You know? So these are, these are the uh, three, three key pillars of the, of the work that we do. So the gas decline that we faced with has actually been in the making um, probably for the last eight, possibly 10 years. Um, the horizon has always been on the, on the cards, uh, purely because we're dependent on a relatively small resource, uh, probably about three to five TCF, um, the original Pande Tamani resource in terms of size. And that has carried industry in, in, in South Africa probably uh, from about 20, 2004, in fact. Um, and we expect the decline um, to then set in from about 2025 onwards. So it has been in the making. What we do find surprising, of course, is how the supply market is reacting to this, but also, also of course, on the demand side. You know, so um, the, the issue that we faced with, of course, is the, the time horizons. We literally 36 months away from, from this, uh, the onset of this decline. And in fact, we expect this to, to set in at the rate of about 10 to 15 percent per annum, which is, which is quite, quite uh, significant. Now, on top of that, what we also faced with is the gas or synthetic gas, which is uh, or byproduct gas, which flows from uh, Secunda down to KwaZulu Natal province. That gas is set to stop flowing uh, in its entirety from 2026, purely because the supplier then needs to uh, uh, use that gas for as part of the decarbonization journey. So it certainly is a double-edged sword that we that we faced with, um, and then uh, of course the the issue around the timelines. You know that uh, that that's really critical in the context of developing alternative. Uh, alternative resources, mainly imports. That's that's the only option that we have at this point, and the in associated infrastructure. And Yaku, in terms of having Sasol being the monopoly supplier of of gas in South Africa, it's one thing maybe for us to get or Sasol itself to get different sources. But what about the pipe infrastructure? Uh, as far as I understand, one can't simply get new sources and assume that your infrastructure at this point in time can handle mm -hmm. the new supply. You need to first upgrade the, the pipelines, as it were. Exactly. Exactly. So, so right now, I mean, the, the, the pipeline infrastructure has limited capacity. For example, if you look at this, there's, there's mainly three, three sections or three core sections of pipeline. The first one, of course, is the Romco pipeline. The Romco pipeline currently transports the gas from Mozambique, Pane, Tamani uh, in the Inhasaro area down to Secunda. That pipeline has a capacity, a working capacity of about 220 million gigajoules uh, per annum. It currently transports about 160 across to South Africa. So there is a bit of breathing space, but not a lot. You know, it is one power station conversion from coal to gas, then the capacity is full, let alone the backlog uh, in terms of uh, fulfilling, fulfilling gas demand. So, so the, the, the ability of Romco to ramp up capacity, it is possible. We believe that uh, that capacity could ramp up easily or relatively easy with additional compression and loop lines to about 320 uh, million gigajoules. So, so I think the, the Romco is well set, of course, uh, to, to, to meet the capacity, at least for, for the foreseeable uh, future. The Gauteng, which is the second uh, main, main sort of trans pipe transmission section for gas, um, has got sufficient capacity, um, so it can probably double up uh, in terms of that. The 
big problem that we face, of course, is the gas flow uh, down to KwaZulu-Natal. Those pipelines are basically running at full capacity at the moment. So there are constraints um, and it does, it will take the careful, the careful coordination between market, market players, the demand side, and of course the infrastructure operators and providers in order to, to, let, to, to let this flow seamlessly. A very important link actually is the, what we envisage as the supply optionality for KwaZulu-Natal. We've just explained that uh, of course that gas will stop flowing in its entirety from 2026. The, criti the critical link uh, to give KwaZulu-Natal industrial users, and there are, there are a few key industries reliant on gas energy, um, is the linkage between the Romco pipeline and the Lily, as we call it. That will give you optionality to bring in um, gas importation uh, through, through Matola, LNG gas, um, uh, in addition to... Um, to, to, to uh, supplying gas to the Gauteng areas. So that linkage is critical. We believe it's a relatively easy and straightforward investment and development project, as opposed to the projects that we see playing out in Richards Bay, for example. These projects, um, there's certainly no discernible timelines at this point in time for these projects or investment horizon for it, as opposed to Matola. Hence, Industry is focused on Montola at the moment to, to, to carry this, uh, to carry us um, at least until 2030 and possibly uh, beyond. And Yaku, in terms of, from an association perspective, is there an increasing trend or risk in terms of um, unrest or targeting or I guess tension points around pipeline infrastructure itself that you've seen in the last while? Is there that issue? Because if, I mean, the current infrastructure, if that is targeted in any sort of even ad hoc manner, never mind sustained manner, if that sort of thing goes down, then of course the country as a whole, you mentioned the economic hubs of Gauteng and KZN would suffer. Is there any indication of that or do you not foresee that as a risk for the time being? Of course, we share your sentiments that the country's infrastructure is under risk at the moment, uh, simply because of the criminal element that is that is abound and, and the inability of the security authorities to, to, to rein this in. The fortunate thing, of course, around gas energy is it's in a, in a gas estate. All right? So it is not something that you would necessarily, um, it, as opposed to a liquid fuel pipeline, it's not something that you can tap into easily and capture the value out of those pipelines. Um, of course, it, that, that simply deals with a criminal risk, but the political risk is always there. It, it's a key piece of infrastructure. We do believe that uh, Romco has... Um, has uh, the status, particularly its compressor stations and so on. Uh, the pipelines around the country do, do carry a, um, a particular uh, uh, key point, key point status uh, from a security perspective. And then Yaku, finally, the, the broad discussion around moving into a more decarbonized, uh, renewable future, mm -hmm. the just, tr just transition, all this mm -hmm. rhetoric, but the practical realities thereof, do you see mm -hmm the will and the moves being put in place to to move south africa in that direction or do you think we're missing a gap maybe with some of our maybe not even getting the basics right it's one thing to have the rhetoric but then getting yeah. the basics in yeah. place so our road to decarbonization is is complex from a social perspective of course uh but i do think it is possible um, we've contributed significantly to the um uh, nbi study uh, that was recently completed around the decarbonization journey around various, well, the decarbonization around South Africa's energy portfolio. We do believe that this is probably the most comprehensive piece of work um, uh, or reference work uh, about at present. And what this says about gas is that the gas certainly has a role in the transition, you know, to, 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 to net zero. What we see from a gas demand perspective, of course, is the move away from coal power, power together with the emergence of, of renewable energy, of course. The two combined then sets this pathway. But it sets a pathway that is practical, and it sets a pathway that will meet certain economic goals as well. Many commentators at the moment, of course, environmental and other social commentators, forget the linkage between gas to power and industrialization. That is a very key piece of economic uh, linkage that is missed by these commentators, where 
we do believe that gas to power has a role to play in as, as a catalyst for infrastructure development. And then the moment you've got infrastructure development, you've got access to gas energy, gas access to gas energy, then of course leads to further industrialization. So it is that linkage, which in our view is, is absolutely critical. So the pathway in our view has been set and we see a significant increase in the demand for gas going forward, but we do need the infrastructure. So, so that is, that is the, uh, the caveat to, to, uh, to achieving these goals. Thank you very much for watching. Let us know in the comments below what you think of South Africa's gas exploration activities and whether we're missing a seriously big opportunity to spur in industrial development and economic growth. Remember, please, before you leave, to like the video and also subscribe to our channel if you have not yet done so. Until next time, this has been Chris Hutting for the Center for Risk Analysis. Take care.